Now we will cover CutPro milling simulation software. Here is the machining simulation window. We have milling, boring, drilling, and turning operations. We will focus on milling only. Now first step is to do stability simulation. Stability allows us to predict shuttle-free depth of cut and the speed which is, must be the first step in preparing the NC program. First, we are clicking on Machine Tool, Properties, and defining the cutter geometry. Here, we have four flutes. It's a uniform pitch cutter with 30 degree helix. You can also set non-uniform pitch angle but let's start with uniform pitch angle. This is the cutter geometry, diameter, rake angle, and relief angle. Rake angle is important to calibrate cutting force coefficients from the database, orthogonal database. Relief angle is important for process damping. Next is the flexibility of the machine tool which is basically hammer test. Results must be brought back to CutPro. There are a couple of ways to define structural flexibility. First, you can use raw cut test data directly, but this is going to work only for stability prediction. The second, you already analyze the data and obtain CMP file, which is model analysis file. You can simply bring that file here. Third is, if you are bringing numbers from other software, you can simply type them in, such as final Element software or from another model analysis package. We are bringing now the raw FRF files measurement files directly to the software. The extension is FRF, which means text file. Alternatively, you can bring MTB files. These are uh, raw measurement files in binary format. You can always enter calibration factors here, which is the gain here. If you forgot how to use proper sensor calibration factors during measurement. This is the measurement file. On top we have the real part and the glow is the measure part in X and Y directions. We can use the raw hammer data in frequency domain only for stability log prediction. Now we select the measured cut test file. As I said, alternatively, you can enter the numbers directly yourself. So there are three ways to enter FRF files, FRF parameters to CutPro. In this particular example, we use FRF, that means ASCII file, text file, which contains tap test data. Next, we select the material from the database. There are two sets of materials here, general materials and MAL materials. MAL materials are calibrated by ourselves. They are more accurate than the others. The others are borrowed from the literature. And there are two ways to store the material data in the database. One of them is oblique orthogonal uh, data, as you, you see here. We do orthogonal to oblique transformation to calculate cutting force coefficients, which are specific to that tool geometry. Alternatively, you can use mechanistic force coefficient. They are fixed, independent of the geometry. If if the workpiece is flexible, you can also enter 
refer our files and attach it to the workpiece. Therefore, Cut Pro can accept flexible tool and flexible workpiece. Next is the cutting condition. Here we simply set radial depth of cut. If we select slotting with 0.2 mm fit rate, the fit rate is does not change stability in some cases, it changes in another case, depending on material database. If the material is chip thickness dependent, if the material database is chip thickness dependent, then it will affect cutting force cautions, therefore it will affect the stability. Now we set everything, we can click start button and start stub built loads. This is our own theory, therefore it's fast and pretty accurate. Now you can look at the stability chart. This is the stability loop. In the horizontal axis we have spin speed, in the vertical axis we have depth of cut. The machine must be programmed to operate in the blue region. If you click right on the border, the machine will be critically stable or may easily chatter. So we recommend that you stay away from the border and approximately stay away 20-25% below the curve just to ensure that the process is stable without chatter. Each cut curve on the stability represents, uh, is produced by one of the natural frequencies in the structure. So I see two dominant modes here. If you go back to the tap test data, you will see two dominant flexible natural frequencies. Let's use the identify model parameters. Uh, which were already identified in model analysis software. And repeat the simulation. We want to compare stability loads predicted by raw tap test data against stability loads predicted by using model parameters only. If the curve fitting or model analysis is pretty accurate, the two results must be pretty close to each other. But model analysis parameters, of course, approximate the dynamics of the machine while the tap test data represents the whole physical machine without an approximation. Now this is model analysis based FRF. Now I will repeat, everything is the same And we copied the simulation. One of them has the FRF, the other we simply use model analysis data. This way you can compare multiple solutions, multiple methods. If you want to consider cutting edge radius, let's say 10-15 micron edge preparation, then you can enable process stamping and you will see the effect of edge preparation on the step of the lobe. The process will be more stable at lower spin speeds if you enable process stamping. Now we will simulate again. It is done. Now you plot that one too. This is now done using CMP file. You can 
superimpose one on top of each other. If you right click, yes, it will automatically superimpose two of them together. Now you can see the results are pretty much the same, except a little bit different because model analysis file approximates the measurement while the other one contains everything. Mind you, we need the model parameters to simulate cutting operation in time domain, which will be the next demonstration. Now let's select a point on the stability. I removed the first one of them and let's zoom in to the spindle speed region where I want to operate the machine and I want to now select a cutting condition. Let's duplicate the project because everything will remain the same except instead of calculating stubble to lob, we will cut at fixed depth of cut and spin speed. Let's cut here. Somewhere there at 7,500 revolution per minute. And let's cut above the stability limit. So we change the name of the simulation and we want to conduct cutting test at 7500 RPM at 4 mm depth of cut. The mode of the simulation is milling simulation or time domain simulation. Now I am entering 7500 RPM and depth of cut is 4. And let's see what happens. So we will simulate for 20 spindle revolutions. Sampling frequency is 10. That means 10 mm -hmm. times faster than the highest natural frequency of the structure. Let's virtually cut the material at this operating point. Click Start button. Now it will cut for 20 spindle revolutions. And it will store force, torque, power, vibrations, chip history, and surface finish. And bending load experienced to be experienced by the bearings in the spindle. The numerical simulation in CutPro is based on exact climatic model of milling which is highly accurate. You can include uh, runouts and uh, variable helix, variable pitch, all kinds of things. It will even show you feed marks on the surface, which is a highly unique mathematical model that we developed in late 80s. Now, we simulated everything. You can look at any of these simulations. I would always start with the chip thickness first. See, because we are slotting, we have up milling and down milling surfaces. We create two surfaces, both of them are stored. Let's look at the chip thickness first. We program 0.2 millimeter chip load. As you see in the beginning, it's 0.2 millimeter, but it exponentially increases all the way to 0.5 millimeter, which indicates strong chatter. Now, instead of cutting 0.2 millimeter, each flute will cut at about 0.5 mm thick chip. 
So the machine is overloaded by 250%. Here, if you zoom in to the chip history, you will see four colors because we have four flutes. Each color represents chips removed by individual flute. I can see about six, seven blue color, uh, blue chips there. That means blue flute is bouncing five times within the cut and creating five broken chips. If you look at the cutting forces, they too increase exponentially from somewhere, let's say, 6-700 Newton all the way to 1700 Newton. Similar to chip thickness, cutting load on the machine uh, is almost three times. Vibrations will be big as well. It starts at, uh, say, 25 third of micron in the beginning, as you see, then it explodes, goes all the way, almost 10 times more. If you right-click on the vibration, then you will see FFT. If you click on FFT button, you can see the machine is chattering at 2400 hertz. If you look at the CMP file, flexibility, you will see that frequency. Let's plot that again. Here we go. So, it is vibrating at the second mode, at that frequency, which is about 2400 hertz. So, the flexibility of the machine at that frequency is causing the vibrations during machining. Now, we do not like this cutting condition, as indicated by stability graph. We have to operate within the green zone. Let's jump to 17,500, increase the productivity by 250%. We duplicate the project file, the case. This way we don't delete the previous ones, so we can compare. Now we are changing only the speed, the rest is the same. 17,500. RPM. Let's change it in the cutting condition button as well. Now let's enter 17,500 there. Stress is the same. We are simulating the cutting process again. It is done. Again, force, torque, vibration, everything is stored. You lose nothing. And the previous simulations are still saved. Let's look at the chip first. Now, the chip thickness is exactly 0 0.2 millimeter. That's what we programmed. And if you look at the forces, they are very smooth. And the deflections are only about 22 micron, not 250 micron we used to have during chatter. The force will be also small, like 700 Newton. It was about 1700 Newton before. This indicates that now the process is acceptable and the surface finish also will be very smooth, as you see. Those spikes in the beginning, they are simply transients of the simulation. You look at the right hand side of the surface finish. Okay. So we have only about 16 micron error left on the surface, which is negligible. That's the tool deflection. Previously we had almost a quarter millimeter. The process is now good. If you want to reduce the deflection errors on the surface less than 16 micron, you have to reduce the chip load or the force this way. This is the previous case where 
we cut at lower speeds, we can see the forces are big. And the surface finish was terrible, as you see. We have almost 240 micron error on the surface and rough surface finish, I finish as you see. So 17,500 RPM speed selection will give you 250% increase in metal removal rate, yet the surface will be small, the load on the machine will be two and a half times less, everything will be better. And let's not forget that we have to stay away from the stubble to border. So 25% below the stability border is a rule of thumb recommendation. If the machine frequency changes during operation, don't forget that it will, uh, those stability lobes will be shifted.